redeemer and giver of life. Amen. Today's gospel relates one of the few stories we have about Jesus between his birth and his baptism by John. It's a revealing story, telling us a lot about Jesus, his parents, and their community. I remember being the father of boys in their early teens. They were a source of great joy, but also at times great stress. At 12, they're growing into adulthood and they are still children. I also remember being a 12 year old, though my memories of that time aren't as clear as those of being a father to 12 year olds. I do remember that my parents didn't always know where I was. We were kind of free range kids. As long as we were home by dinner time, no one worried too much about us. We were raised by a community of parents. If we were out of line or misbehaving, any adult in the neighborhood would straighten us out. Similarly, if we fell and skinned a knee, any adult would take care of us. We called several of them aunt or uncle, even though they weren't related to us at all. That's the sort of community it was. And so I understand Mary and Joseph not being concerned that they didn't know where Jesus was as they start the journey back to Galilee after their Passover observance at the temple in Jerusalem. It wasn't the first time. Indeed, the gospel tells us they went every year. I imagine Jesus and a group of boys probably hung out together. Twelve-year-olds don't always want to be with their parents. So as long as they saw some of the boys, they figured Jesus was with them. But he wasn't to be seen at the end of the day as they were getting ready to eat. And Mary and Joseph became concerned and turned back to Jerusalem. They probably hoped to find him on the road behind them, but he was nowhere to be seen. They had gone a day's walk from Jerusalem, but had to go back. Any parent knows the fear and worry that comes from not knowing where your child is, or if he's okay. They searched for him for three days. They didn't know if he had stopped somewhere along the road. Searching while walking is slower than if they were able to go right to the temple for him. They probably had to stop and ask strangers if they had seen him. They had to check several streets and shops and villages they walked through. And increasingly frantic, they worked their way back to the temple where they found Jesus deep in conversation with the teachers. In that society, a 12-year-old was nearly a grown-up, much more than today. Jesus shows an awareness of who he is and who he is called to be. He must be about his father's business, not referring to Joseph, but to his heavenly father. Mary and Joseph really don't understand his answer. And like parents in every time and place, they want Jesus to know they were worried about him. As every parent has felt, a combination of relief at finding their child and anger that they had been lost, and probably a little guilt. But he was doing what 12-year-olds do so well, not telling their parents everything they're up to. And Jesus is acting like an adolescent, although that's not a term that would have had any meaning in first century Judea. A 12-year-old is looking back to being a child and looking forward to being an adult. Mary and Joseph were not ready for the adult Jesus to emerge, though he was acting very much like an adult in the temple, engaging in serious question and answer with the teachers. We are told they were amazed at his wisdom and understanding. Yet he went home with Mary and Joseph and was obedient to them, according to the gospel account, back to being a child. Yet we know from this brief account of his time in Jerusalem that Jesus knows who he is and that he is the Son of God. This is all we read in either of the Gospels of Matthew or Luke about Jesus from the family's return from Egypt until he is 30 years old and ready to start his ministry by being baptized by John. What is it 
about this story that warrants its inclusion in the gospel. We really learn a lot. We understand that Mary and Joseph trusted the child Jesus to take care of himself, even when they didn't know where he was. They trusted their community to watch over each other. We learn something about Jesus' wisdom and understanding. And we learn that the teachers in the temple included him in their conversation, respecting him and listening to this young man from Nazareth. Sometimes we hear people say that children are our future. There's even a song that says that. This reading from the gospel tells us something different, that children are our present. In the gospel we read for New Year's Eve, Jesus' disciples asked which of them would be the greatest in his kingdom. And Jesus pointed to a child, not to one of the disciples. We are very fortunate at St. John's to have a lot of children active in the church and contributing their energy, time, curiosity, and creativity to our life as a church. One cannot watch the video Christmas pageant with its large cast of our children and young people without laughing, admiring their skill and understanding and their perspective on this familiar story. Along with our adult youth leaders, our clergy, videographers, and parents, they told the story in their own way, enriching all of us this Christmas season. That's how communities thrive, even in this dark season. Just as Mary and Joseph trusted their community to take care of each other, we gather as a community because we need each other. All of our unique gifts, needs, differing understandings and experiences, the background and choices that we make. We've been through an awful year as a church, as a community, and as a nation. My resolution for 2021 is to be thankful that we're past 2020. Just as the 12-year-old Jesus looked back at being a child and forward to his ministry, we look back on 2020 and forward to 2021, knowing that we came through the year as a community of faith, and that the strength of our community will bring us a better 2021. We need each other. The experience and wisdom that come with age, the curiosity and wonder of the young, the wide range of opinions and attitudes of all of us, all are essential to our beloved community. And when that 12-year-old from a small rural town comes to us, and seems way too smart for his age and background. Let us welcome him into our conversation, listen to him, and watch him grow. Amen.